So Gretchen and I have worked together for many years. Burst Travel and Princess Cruises have worked together many years. A lot of it, we a lot of our time and investment has been uh, in promoting Alaska. It's just, you know, it's one of the few destinations that's engaging, scenic, cultural, dynamic, kind of all at once. It's really got a lot of features all wrapped up into one. The industry, uh, Gretchen side of the business, has voted Princess the number one cruise line in Alaska for almost 20 years in a row. We take that very seriously. Uh, you'll see that each year we tweak things just a little bit. We improve things a little bit. So tonight I'm going to share some thoughts with you about Princess itself, and I'm going to boast a little bit from time to time. Uh, we're going to talk about Alaska itself and then kind of how it all fits together. And we do these presentations because we know there's so much that goes into your decision when making a, a choice about Alaska. So I love this first photo here. Uh, it shows our ship, again, with the backdrop of uh, Marjorie Glacier deep into Glacier Bay National Park. It's just such a stunning view. It's very, very difficult, challenging to get your arms and mind wrapped around just how massive everything in it is in Alaska. It looks like you could almost jump off the ship there and swim and touch the glacier. We're probably a half a mile away, the ship is, from the glacier in this photo. Marjorie Glacier is a mile wide at the water, about 40 stories high. So again, it's really difficult to get your arms uh, wrapped around everything uh, in Alaska. So on every cruise tour, and we're going to talk about those tonight, we visit Glacier Bay National Park. The ship will enter the bay early in the morning, and we spend the entire day cruising in Glacier Bay National Park. And the crown jewel, really, of all of Alaska is at the end of Glacier Bay or deep into Glacier Bay. And it's called Marjorie Glacier. Marjorie Glacier is a mile wide at the water. And you're seeing most of it there. So it's really quite amazing. I just need to get something else off my screen here. There we go. And um, some years ago, we added the livery onto our ships. We're a British heritage. So livery just simply means logo in, in uh, across the pond. And when we first uh, added the logo, I didn't really care for it, but now I absolutely just love it. And it's really stunning when you see the ship in Alaska and really stunning when you see a glacier uh, in all of their glory as the backdrop of our, of our, uh, of our ships. So uh, sometime last spring, we had a, a TV advertising, advertising campaign on Alaska. We were not really part of the market. Our markets uh, in this part of the country were really not part of that ad buy, but I'm gonna show you the ad anyway. Hello, across the Joe, I don't know the audio is not. I don't know if it's on your end. Audio is not working so good on our end, unfortunately. Okay. So. Yeah. Maybe it's just me, but at least I get a pic get an idea of the pictures and okay. Maybe if anybody else had audio, let Gretchen know in the chat if you can, but maybe we'll have to pass on the audio then. Uh, each story with Princess starts what we call internally our shared purpose, which is to share our world. And in today's case, we're going to present Alaska. However, we are worldwide. Uh, we cruise uh, the Caribbean, Mexican Riviera, Panama Canal, Canada, New England. Hawaii, Australia, New Zealand, South America, all across Europe, Japan, really every part of the world, including full world cruises. And if anybody's interested, we still have some space available on the world cruise departing in January for about 110 days. So to share our world, share our, our hearts and deliver what we, what we uh, offer from really right from within, and in the case of Alaska, it really speaks loudly, really yells loudly, uh, 
most of our employees on land in Alaska. So when you do a cruise tour, cruise and then tour on land, most of the employees are local Alaskans. They love their state. They love to promote it. They love to show it off. Protect the earth, which really means leaving behind as small of an, of an environmental footprint as possible. In Alaska, maybe the best, the very best of all of the examples in the world is in Juneau, where we uh, actually uh, port, we dock, we tie the ship up to the dock, and we, I'm, I'm going to simplify it, but we turn the key off on the ship and bring out a big extension cord and plug in the local power. And by doing that, we cut down on any local promote, uh, uh, pollution. And then creating lasting memories, regardless of what we do, whether it's build a new ship, we have a brand new ship debuting in February in the Mediterranean called Sun Princess, uh, tweak an itinerary, add a new shore excursion, maybe build a new dining venue on one of the ships. All of those features, all of those things that we do are designed to create lasting memories. So when you come back from your cruise and you share your experiences with your friends and family, then we know we've accomplished what we've set out to accomplish. All right, Alaska vacationing in general, uh, one of the real big highlights, of course, uh, probably for all of us, is that we want to see glaciers when we go to Alaska. So Glacier Bay National Park, with limited exceptions, is on every single itinerary between Vancouver and Anchorage. So you see it here. This is kind of the middle of the glacier to the left. Um, in this view, you can see our our guests out on the in, on one of the while well, they're on the promenade deck of the ship, um, enjoying the ship. All of our ships were built with ample public deck area, really for scenic cruising and viewing. These people are, are on the promenade deck, while most of us tend to go up on one of the top decks to view the glaciers. And by all means, do that. Give yourself a whole an entirely different look and and from a different perspective, and go down to one of the lower decks and take a look at the glacier. It looks totally different when you see it there. So on every cruise tour, we offer Glacier Bay National Park, again, with a couple of limited exceptions, along with a second glacier viewing opportunity. So two opportunities for glacier viewing on every cruise between Vancouver and Anchorage. That's a real key feature of what we offer. If you're going north, we visit Glacier Bay National Park and Marjorie Glacier and an area called College Fjord, which is a long, narrow fjord, narrow by Alaska standards. It's still pretty big. Um, a long, narrow fjord that the ship cruises into and turns around and comes right back out. Doesn't matter which side of the ship you're on. If you're, if you're spending time on your private balcony, there'll be uh, ample time for you to, an uh, opportunity to see the glaciers. In College Fjord, you might see one or two or three glaciers at any one time in particular. And then if you're coming south, instead of uh, College Fjord, we visit an area called Hubbard Glacier. So two glacier viewing opportunities. Then another big key part of our trip is that we all want to see Denali. Denali Park and, and hopefully uh, Mount Denali itself. So Denali National Park is 6 million acres. So of course, we're not going to see all of it. But we're going to see plenty of it, and we're going to see the main part. So when you when you are at Denali, when you're on a Princess Cruise tour, we always spend two nights around the Denali area. We have a couple of different lodges there. So by all means, this is the uh, staging point for the tours into the park. You can see the single road that goes into Denali Park, uh, and um, we have a couple of different versions of tours into the park. Hopefully we'll see some wildlife while we're in the park. If you go on a cruise tour with Princess, we can just about guarantee, can't quite, just about I guess means we can't quite, uh, just about guarantee you'll see caribou and doll sheep. So by all means, be ready when you're on the tour bus uh, in Denali Park, be ready with your binoculars if there are wildlife to be seen, the driver will point them out. And then uh, oftentimes you still might have to use binoculars to see the doll sheep and to make them out on the on the rugged uh, 
uh, and rugged ridge lines in the mountains there. Moose and bear kind of seem to be the wild cards. And so uh, just kind of keep in mind that uh, while well, we hope to show you them, they're, they're certainly not guaranteed, but uh, in, likely, in all likelihood, you might see bear while we're cruising in Glacier Bay National Park. So be ready and have, again, have your binoculars ready. And you might be one of the few people that are looking for bear when you're in Glacier Bay National Park cruising from the ship. You might see them along the shoreline. Or you might see them on land someplace as you are touring into the park, et cetera. And, you know, it's it's always interesting because uh, when you see bear, of course, you're hopefully at a distance uh, far enough away to be safe, right? But uh, it's so it's difficult sometimes to to really determine if the, the bear is a black bear or a brown bear. And the way to tell the difference, if you're not able to, is to run, climb a tree. And if it's a black bear, it's going to follow you right up the tree. Okay, then you know it's a black bear. If it's a brown bear, it's going to knock the tree down. So by all means, um, enjoy any of the wildlife sighting. The last of the Denali Big Five is the Alaskan version of the gray wolf. All right. And then, of course, we all want to see whales, too. All right. So uh, a couple of likely places that you'll see whales from the ship would be number one while we're cruising through the inside passage. And we have an onboard naturalist on board the ship the entire uh, time. And um, they'll point out whales. And hopefully you'll see whales. Another likely place to see whales would be either approaching or departing Ketchikan. So kind of keep that in your back pocket too and kind of be ready for that. I don't know why there we tend to see them there, but we do. And then cruising the inside passage, of course, is really a key part of any trip we take in Alaska. The inside passage, by definition, is between Vancouver and Ketchikan. It's 330 miles. It takes about 30 hours. We don't get off the ship anywhere. Uh, and it's a wonderful, scenic, relaxing day. Our onboard naturalists will spend their most of their day on the bridge. So they have advanced sightings of... Uh, of lighthouses, fishing villages, uh, and hopefully whales. So they'll announce that uh, approaching in a half a mile, you'll see whales on the port side or on the starboard side of the ship. And so by all means, uh, watch for those announcements. Some of our ships cruise around the outside part of Van Vancouver Island. That's the part that's just left of the word uh, inside passage on my on my map here and then back into the inside passage so we really on every cruise tour between vancouver and anchorage then touring into the interior of alaska we we uh, share with you really the top reasons most of us say we want to go to alaska which is number one to see glaciers we offer two opportunities there two opportunities or two nights around denali park uh, and hopefully showing you wi uh, wildlife and cruising the inside passage. So we offer all the top reasons. If you see anything advertised on the ship, any activity advertised that uh, has the logo North to Alaska or uses the word North to Alaska, it means it's part of our onboard enrichment program. We really bring the destination to life on board the ship. So for example, the park rangers board the ship in Glacier Bay National Park early in the morning. They spend the entire day with our customers. Uh, you can have a private audience with them. This park ranger looks to be entertaining a couple of different families. They'll set up a table outside the buffet and sell um, uh, memorabilia. Um, if there's enough kids in the age bracket three to seven years old, there'll be a park ranger that boards the ship just to spend the time with them. This young couple here is holding and obviously having a photo taken of sled dog puppies. When we're in Skagway on most sailings, we have a real life dog musher that boards the ship, conducts a little presentation in the piazza or the atrium area of the ship on sled dog racing. They bring their own puppies with them uh, on board and uh, you get to 
uh, engage with the puppies. And it's just one of those activities where everybody melts. Or you might you might watch some uh, axe throwing uh, demonstrations and maybe even participate in yourself. So our North Alaska program is our enrichment program on board the ship. Here's kind of a list of some of the other things we might offer. Uh, a lot of a lot of it uh, focuses around presentations or films that we offer, uh, uh, sharing Alaska with you, maybe on wildlife or or uh, glaciers, etc. Down at the bottom of my screen there, I've, I've highlighted Cook My Catch. So if you're on a shore excursion that uh, is a fishing shore excursion, obviously, and if it's just if in the definition it mentions Cook My Catch, it's one where you can arrange with the guide, with the uh, fishing guide, to have your catch, assuming you catch fish, of course, uh, arrange to have your uh, fish delivered to the ship. Uh, and then from there, the, the the fish will be prepared for you that evening at dinner. So I have a couple of photos of that later. A couple of things about Princess. We've been in business since 1965. We're the, we were the backdrop for the TV show, The Love Boat. This coming season will be our 55th year cruising Alaskan waters. Uh, we're really proud of that heritage. The highlights really focus in on the, the enriching experience that we offer, the dedicated rail service and the lodges, and maybe most of all are the employees, which are princess employees in Alaska. They're not contract employees, but rather they're dedicated princess employees. So normally I would show a video here, but I, I'm going to pass on that, uh, Gretchen, so I'll go by it. And then from here, we will look at our couple of our itinerary choices. So we have what we call uh, inside passage itineraries where the ship will leave either Seattle or Vancouver, cruise north as far north as Skagway, and then back to either Seattle or Vancouver, whichever port you left from. These are called inside passage itineraries. They call on typically Juneau, Ketchikan, Skagway. Uh, there are a couple of sailings that might have a different port of call. Uh, they're seven-day itineraries, and they're round trip from the original port city. So they don't go all the way north to Anchorage. So we're not able to do a cruise tour with these. We don't, we don't see Denali Park, but they're a great itinerary. I've been on it four or five times myself, and it's an awesome itinerary. Um, there's something else I was going to say about it. Oh, rather than two glacier viewing opportunities, there will be one. It might be Marjorie, it might be Glacier Bay National Park and Marjorie Glacier, like this photo. It may be uh, Dawes Glacier, which is at the end of a long uh, fjord called uh, Endicott Arm. Or it might be where we've gone a little bit further north to Hubbard Glacier. So earlier I mentioned that Glacier, uh, Marjorie Glacier is a mile wide. Hubbard Glacier is six miles wide. So again, it's really a, a challenge to get your mind wrapped around at how massive everything is uh, in Alaska. And then we have our voyage of the glaciers between Vancouver and Anchorage or Whittier, which is the port city for Anchorage. This too is a seven day itinerary, departing from Vancouver, cruising north through the inside passage, then calling on Ketchikan, uh, Juneau and Skagway typically, two glacier viewing opportunities, Hubbard Glacier and College Fjord. And then from there, crew, uh, doing a land tour north of Anchorage, okay? And so I'm gonna walk through kind of a sample trip now, but I want, and I'm gonna go north in my sample from Vancouver to Anchorage and then touring uh, north of Anchorage. But I want you to keep in mind that you can do this same trip in the opposite direction. So rather than starting in Vancouver, you would start in Anchorage or Fairbanks, tour Alaska and cruise south to Vancouver. So you really have your choice. And when you sit down with one of Gretchen's or communicate with one of Gretchen's uh, uh, staff, one of the travel advisors at Burst, they're gonna help walk through with you um, which cruise tour really suits you and, and, and and your needs. So we're going to start in Vancouver, absolutely stunning city. 
Many call it the most beautiful city in North America. Some people say the entire world. I know it's clearly the most beautiful city I've ever been in, other than my own hometown here in Stillwater, Minnesota. But nonetheless, it's a beautiful city. The ship departs. You board right downtown Vancouver at a port called Canada Place. Uh, and if you're able to, and I know Gretchen would advise this and suggest this, add a day or two to your vacation, go to Vancouver a little bit ahead of the cruise, explore it, enjoy it, see it, and really uh, board the ship in the afternoon of your departure day, rested, relaxed, and happy, and away you go. And we cruise through the inside passage the entire first day. So as you, as I mentioned before, it takes 30 hours to get to Ketchikan. We don't port any place. We're cruising the entire time. It's an absolutely wonderful day. Our onboard naturalists will conduct a presentation or two in the theater. They'll point out interesting sites, including, and hopefully those whales. Here's just another picture of the ship going through the inside passage. Then we call on Ketchikan. And as I mentioned, there are a couple of variations uh, where the itinerary might be a little bit different, but for the most part, we're gonna call on Ketchikan. Ketchikan is well known for its totem poles, right? Uh, it's a town of about 12 or 15,000 people. We dock right downtown. You get off the ship, you walk about a hundred feet and you're on Main Street in Ketchikan. There's a great, great uh, self-guided map you can pick up there and, and just tour Ketchikan on its on your own. Or of course you can do any one of a number of shore excursions. Uh, it's also known as the salmon fishing capital of the world. Then Juno is our next port. It's your first chance to see a glacier if you're going north. It's a glacier about 10 miles out of town. That's the photo on the left-hand side called Mendenhall Glacier. You can see it by going on a city tour that takes you out to the glacier. You can see it from a distance, of course, or you can do really the polar opposite, no pun intended, and, uh, and take a helicopter ride and land out on top of the glacier. Really, really an exhilarating experience. This is where you can do a whale watching shore excursion uh, on a smaller boat, hopefully see whales close up. As part of our onboard enrichment North to Alaska program, Libby Riddles, pictured here on the right-hand side of the screen, boards the ship and, and conducts a very compelling presentation on, on her life and uh, her sled dog racing. So she moved to Alaska on her own at 16 years old, lived out in the, in the wilderness by herself, no heat, no running water and went on to become the first female I did a rod champion. So by all means, if her presentation and schedule doesn't conflict with a shore excursion you're on that day, I really urge you to go hear her speak. She tells quite a story. Then uh, I mentioned fishing. This is a great port to fish from, salmon fishing primarily. And uh, if you're on a shore excursion, again, that uh, offers the cook by catch uh, feature, you can ask for the guide to have your fish delivered to the ship. It'll be prepared for you on board the ship and it'll be delivered to you that evening. So this is uh, actually my, the platter that was delivered to my table the last time I went to Alaska. So we caught fish, we asked for the fish to be prepared and the uh, crew brought out this platter. Again, photos just don't do it justice. <clears throat> this platter was about six feet wide. Um, the wait staff had to bring out a second table, sat it down next to our dining room table and put the platter down and the head waiter came over and served us. So it was really quite an experience. And I could look around the dining room or I did look around the dining room and I could see everybody else that were unrelated to us wondering where this was on the menu because they, they couldn't find it on their menu. Skyway's our next port of call. And for the most part, sometimes we call on a port called Icy Straight Point. If you call on Skagway, it's a, uh, it's a uh, frontier type town. It's the, the port city for the gold rush of 1898. A wonderful shore excursion called the White Pass Scenic Railway. 
You can see that on the left-hand side here, it's a narrow gauge railroad that climbs 3,000 feet, takes you to frightening heights, but it's a, it's a wonderful experience. On the right-hand side is a picture of Icy Strait Point, a uh, much newer port, quite a bit more rustic, uh, a great port. Some people call it their favorite that are seeing it now. Uh, a, a place where you might do uh, uh, a bear search tour. And if anybody does zip lining, which I don't participate in myself, do you, Gretchen? No, you don't either. If you do zip line, there's a full five minute zip line in Icy Strait Point. And uh, I'm told that's an incredibly long zip line. So great experience. Then we're gonna visit um, Glacier Bay National Park, spending a full day. So the picture in the upper left-hand corner is the same glacier that we've seen several pictures of already. It looks entirely different in this photo. And that's this really the way it is, depending on where you're at on the ship, whether you're up high or down below or on the front of the ship. When we when we view the glaciers, the ship will turn. It, it's really unimportant which side of the ship you're on. If you're going north, we'll visit uh, College Fjord shown on the bottom part of my screen here. You can see that there might be more than one glacier within your view. And then there's also Hubbard Glacier shown in the upper right hand uh, part of this uh, uh, slide uh, with a gigantic uh, calving going on right now in this photo. So two glacier viewing opportunities. Then we arrive Whittier the next day, <clears throat> which is the port city for Anchorage. So if we are cruising without going on a tour, we would transfer to the Anchorage airport and fly home. If we were going on a cruise tour, which again is cruising and then going on a land tour north of Anchorage, in most cases, you board the train right next to the ship. There's no transfer other than you disembark the ship, walk across the pier and uh, board the train. And the train takes you directly to either our Denali Lodge. It's about an eight hour trip or our Mount McKinley Lodge, which is a separate train and a separate destination, and it takes you about six hours. So wonderfully scenic train ride. The, uh, the operating railroad is the Alaskan Railroad. So when you see the uh, blue and yellow uh, engines, um, that's the Alaskan Railroad. When you see the Princess Rail Cars and the Princess logo, those are dedicated Princess Rail Cars. Uh, you can see in this photo right here just how close the train is to the ship. So then, um, again, we always offer two opportunity or two nights around Denali Park. The hey, photo. Hey, Joe? On, yes, go Joe, ahead. Joe, sorry. I, I'm going to jump in here because we got a question, and I think it, it uh, references the train. Okay. A um, uh, question came in. It says, is everything handicap uh, accessible? And yes. I'm assuming they're assuming I, I'm assuming they're referring to the train because that's what you're talking about now. So I wanted to jump in. Sorry to so, interrupt. So the, the answer is yes, but we would also want to, of course, when we talk to Princess Reservations, uh, make sure we make those arrangements. But yes, the answer is yes. So, um, so two nights around Denali Park, staying at one of our two lodges. Uh, one's called the Denali Princess Wilderness Lodge. This is the staging point to uh, go into the park, to do a park tour, or you might stay at our Mount McKinley Wilderness Lodge, uh, which is uh, really only 45 miles away, but it's tucked way back in the wilderness. Uh, you can see the deck on the front of the lodge on the right-hand side there. It's the only public deck in Alaska that potentially has a view of Mount Denali. Really quite stunning. It's about uh, 40 miles or 41 miles away. Uh, if the weather cooperates, this will be your view. Uh, if it hasn't cooperated, or you can anyway, you can leave a wake-up call at the front desk. And should the weather cooperate during the night, they will call you and you can come down and see the mountain. And by all means, I really recommend doing that. Even if you've seen it during the day, it gives you another opportunity. If anybody has seen the TV show Treehouse Masters, 
on season nine, episode nine, the Treehouse Master organization came to the Mount McKinley Lodge grounds and built one of the elaborate tree houses. And from that tree house, potentially have a view of Mount McKinley as well. We also have a couple other lodges. One's called the Kenai Princess Wilderness Lodge. That is south of Anchorage. We would motor coach there to start our trip. Uh, it's, uh, it's oftentimes described as where Alaskans go to vacation. Or you may go quite a bit further um, east, north and east to our Copper River Lodge, which is uh, quite remote. Uh, and typically the cruise tour itinerary would be a day or two longer to visit either Kenai or our Copper River Lodge. So there's about 20 different variations of the land part of the cruise tour, even though the cruise is the same each week. So when you sit down again with one of the Burst Travel Advisors, they will help you figure out really which one is the right right one for you. So rather than trying to sort through all 20 of them, you may, uh, once you visit with uh, one of Gretchen's staff, they'll help you figure that out. And in some cases, we go all the way north to Fairbanks. So there's, there's a lot of information, a lot to sort through. We're in the busiest booking period of the entire year for next year's Alaska. And by all means, uh, if you make a booking now, you're able to reserve the date you want, the itinerary and the choice of land that you want, make a deposit, and that deposit's refundable until until about 100 days before your trip. So, uh, But by doing it now, it gives you the most choice. So as we kind of get ready to wrap up here, just a couple of things that come up that I'll, I'll address. And then I'll stop sharing my screen and we'll see if there's a couple of general questions. Uh, but I think what we really want you to do and hope you will do is to schedule an appointment and Gretchen will talk about that with somebody from the staff to really review things. When's the best time to go is a question that comes up often and which direction should I go? The best time to go is any anytime between early May and mid-September. That's when the ships go there to Alaska. And if you go early in the year, there's still snow in the lower elevations. It's typically cool and crisp. If you wait till mid-June into mid-August uh, during that uh, six or eight week period, the growing season, of course, has been in full swing and you see the gigantic flowers. And it's about 10 degrees warmer on average. If you go in, the, in late August into September, you might see some fall colors. It's a really wonderful time to go any time of the year. Northbound or southbound, they're equally as, as good. One's not really better than the other. There might be a practical reason you go uh, north or south. Maybe it might be based on air schedule and air availability or something along those lines. Pack to dress like you would expect to see people dress in Alaska. Blue jeans, khaki pants, and sweatshirts during the day is kind of the normal wear. Make sure you bring a pair of gloves. Make sure you bring a stocking cap. And that way, if it's a cool, misty day in Glacier Bay, you'll be real comfortable out on deck, okay? You want to be out on deck. That's probably why you bought this trip. And by all means, you just want to be prepared for that. In the evening, the spirit of the dress code for five of the seven nights is called smart casual. And that simply means that everybody looks nice. And on the other two nights, the spirit of the dress code is formal. So for women, the formal nights will be anywhere from a dressy pantsuit to something considerably more dressy. For men, typically it's a, it's a collared shirt and a tie and maybe a sweater, maybe a coat. And of course, trousers and shoes and all of that. Uh, and that's the spirit of the dress code. After you've made your purchase, after you've told Gretchen that I want this cruise on this date and this type of cabin, I want to buy my airline ticket and I, and I want to buy insurance or not, uh, the, addition, the additional spending that you can expect would be the shore excursions from the different ports of call, 
land excursions that are extra uh, from the lodges, dining at the lodges, on board the train, at our specialty and, and casual dining venues are also additional. But keep in mind that the vast majority of dining is all included when you're on the ship. Wi-Fi is additional, so is crew appreciation. We used to call that, that gratuities and beverages. However, we have a package called Princess Plus, which most of our customers are including in their price now, that includes that Wi-Fi gratuities and beverage package. So uh, Gretchen staff will review that with you. Everybody has to have a passport um, if you're doing a cruise tour. And by all means, uh, I like to suggest when we talk about passports to pull yours out and uh, make sure it's good for at least six months past the last date you plan to travel. So it has to be. So your 10 year passport is really only good for nine and a half years. And you just don't want to run too close to the end there. Uh, I already mentioned that it's a good idea to consider booking now when you have the most choice. And then our Princess Plus package is what, uh, what the Burst Travel Advisor will talk to you about that includes Wi-Fi, gratuities, and, and crew and uh, a beverage package. If anybody has a military history, as our salute to the military, we'll ask you for a copy of your DD-214 form. We'll send it into Princess to see if you qualify for an added shipboard credit. And in the case of Alaska, it's $100 for that military person. All of our ships are what we call medallion class. Uh, and it essentially means that you'll download an app on your smart device uh, or on your, on, your la on your desktop. And from there, you will um, register for everything about your trip before you ever leave. We'll mail you this medallion about two weeks before you, you set sail. It's about the size of a quarter. And from here, it, it uh, really means you're, you're ready to cruise. And when you get to the pier, you go directly to security. You walk through security, show your passport and medallion. You're all pre-registered and you just go directly to your cabin. So, and then from there, it does a whole lot more. It serves as your key card, opens up your door uh, to your cabin, uh, and you use it to purchase things. When you're on shore in some of the Alaska ports now, there'll be vendors uh, on shore, stores, shops that accept the Princess Medallion for payment as well, where it's charged back to your shipboard account. So that's things in kind of a nutshell. So Gretchen, I think what I'll do now is stop sharing my screen and, and you and I can both uh, be unmuted. And, and if anybody has a question, I think we have a small enough crowd where we can just have everybody unmute themselves and ask a question. Or do you have some questions in chat that you've seen? Uh, nothing in chat right now, but if you think of something, go ahead and put it in there or um, feel free to unmute yourself. But I just kind of want to review quickly um, just remind everybody that this has been recorded and we will put it up on the Burst Travel website. It'll be under um, services, travel seminars, and there'll be a link there. Basically, it's a link over to our YouTube channel where we post all of our um, webinars. So if you uh, want to share this um, with others, um, just let them know they can they can find it there. Probably be up and running tomorrow, if not, definitely by Monday. Um, so it's a good way to kind of go back if you forgot something or like I said, you wanna share it with anybody. Um, but as Joe referenced a couple of times throughout the uh, presentation, um, really you're gonna to wanna to reach out to your Burst Travel Advisor. If you work with uh, an advisor, you can email them directly and request to set up an appointment to you know meet with them either via Zoom over the phone, come into the office. Um, it just works a lot easier um, with um, setting up an appointment because our advisors are in, in high demand um, with all of their expertise and knowledge. So um, that way you can spend some good quality time. And like Joe said, they, you can tell them what your interests are, what your availability is, when you can travel, you know, all of that information and they can find the best um, option for you. Um, so 
You can email them directly. If you don't have a specific advisor you work with, you can certainly go to burstravel.com, go to locations, and there you'll find um, a contact us form that you can complete with uh, some information and what you're interested in and in, in dates of travel. And that will go to our um, customer service desk who will then um, get that out to an advisor to contact you to set up an appointment. Or you can use the old fashioned phone and call. Um, all of that information, all of the contact information is located on the um, website um, under locations. Uh, so those are the ways that are, are the best ways to reach out to our advisors. And again, stress the uh, the thought of putting together um, an appointment so that you have um, that time devoted to you and then they can start the research and, and start looking on, on all of that. Um, now we did get a question that came into um, chat. It says, do we transfer our own luggage from the Denali Park Resorts onto the ship or do does Princess Staff do that? So we have a really, really sophisticated luggage program in Alaska. And when you uh, first arrive, you'll receive some pretty detailed instructions on, on how to handle your luggage. So it'll in part depend on which itinerary you're on. In some cases, you will just take a small carry-on with you when you're on land and your larger suitcase would, would meet you at your destination, whether it be in Fairbanks or Anchorage or, or on the ship, uh, but you'll receive detailed instructions. So always remember to at least carry one suitcase with you that's kind of a carry-on. Never want to lose track of, of course, your necessities and your medications or anything like that. Always have that with you. Uh, but it's a really sophisticated program. And in terms of uh, accessibility throughout the cruise and the cruise tour, most everything uh, is designed the, along the, the means of being accessible. There might be some shore excursions that are not accessible, but that would all be noted accordingly. Uh, and it's just maybe even more reason to consider booking early if you need a cabin or would like a cabin that has accessibility features as well. So. Okay, a couple other questions. Um, this one's a little bit hard to answer, but approximate cost of a trip. So um, I know that that depends on the seasonality, if you're gonna do a cruise only or cruise tour. So maybe you can just kind of give a brief idea of um, an idea of what that would cost. Well, it might be something along the lines of, it, it, there really are so many variations, the, the cruise, the type of cabin, the length of the cruise tour, whether or not you buy airline tickets, et cetera, but somewhere around $3,000 a person, something along those lines. But when you talk to the staff, they're gonna be able to give you several different prices for each itinerary, just based on the type of cabin and the uh, length of the cruise tour program as well. And, and I'm gonna jump in here with that. Um, the one thing that I really think you should budget for or think about in terms of um, the type of cabin, um, you really should consider uh, booking a balcony cabin because the scenery is just so amazing while you're at sea, um, just throughout the cruise that you wanna have that um, option to go out on a balcony and just sit and enjoy. Um, so as you budget, that's I think where you should start and, and um, really see if that can fit into your budget. Cause if you go on another cruise anywhere else, you know, we always recommend balconies because that's the way to go. But for Alaska, it, it's almost like a, a necessity to really enjoy the destination. So we can give you an idea of costs on on um, what that would be. D dining on land, whether it be on the train or at the lodges, is additional. Uh, it's not included in any of the packages unless you buy a package that includes dining. But if you don't, then um, the the Dining is additional, and likewise, the gratuities would be as well. The dress code on the ship, you know, I kind of mentioned what the spirit of the dress code is, how well it's enforced is a, is a maybe subject to uh, the crew on board. Uh, on the formal nights when, when dress is dressy, uh, the buffet is always open. So keep that in mind uh, for any kind of dress. But the spirit of the dress code is really the spirit throughout the ship with the exception of the buffet. 
I wouldn't, yeah, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't let it be something that's going to affect you too much, but, uh, you know, for men, uh, we're all going to have shirts anyway. A tie doesn't take up much case, much space in the suitcase and, and maybe a sweater, which we probably have as well anyway. So you saw those two then, Joel, the, the dress code, how strict it was, and then um, the land dining package include gratuity yeah. and taxes. Yeah, That's I similar know. to what, I mean, if you go out to dinner here, you would you pay your gratuity and taxes. I think pricing is probably similar to dining, you know, anywhere at a restaurant in your local community. Okay, do you see, um, okay, or do I need to call my office and set up a time? Um, so Scott wanted to know about um, a contact I can send. I guess, Scott, it would depend on where you're located. I, my best suggestion for you would be to just go to uh, burstravel.com, click on locations, and you can see a list of all of our locations there. And if there's one near where you live, you can just click on that and go to the contact us form and just complete it and, and indicate that you would listen to the webinar uh, this evening and that you're interested in having somebody um, contact you um, to talk about a Princess Cruise or Cruise Tour. I think that's going to be the easiest thing um, for now. So just go to burstravel.com locations, find the location. If you're in between locations or whatever, there's just a general contact us form also, and then we can kind of find um, the, the best advisor to help you with that. And then... Um, <laughs> So I don't own a sweater or a tie, so not every fits into that. I think, I think the option there, then, like Joe said, I know people that have done we've done these presentations for many years, and that's always an issue that comes up. Um, and I think the best option is that they do have other dining on a formal night. You can certainly go to the uh, to the the buffet restaurant, and they have um, amazing selections there. Really, it's not like you're eating you know, like a uh, old country buffet or anything like that. They'll have all kinds of um, stations and food stations. And so I think that's a real um, good option if you just don't want to deal with it. If you just want to wear your sweatshirt and your jeans, um, that's that's a good place to to dine. Um, and, I, you know, I don't know, Joe, even room service is, is an option. But I think the buffet is your best option if you don't want to dress up. Well, great. All great. Right. Let's see if there's anything else that's come up here. Um, so any other questions? We'll just kind of, I'll just scan here again. Um, but yeah, if you have questions, more questions that you think of, um, just like I say, reach out to your advisor. If you work with a Burst Travel Advisor or Pegasus Travel Advisor, if not, check the website for a location near you, or you can just fill out the general contact us form with any questions and concerns or uh, want to set up an appointment and our uh, concierge desk will get in touch with you to get that taken care of. So I think that's it. Thank you again, everyone, for your time this evening. Thank you, Joel. That was very informative. Always a good job and um, makes me want to go to Alaska. I'm ready to go next summer. So not right now, but uh, summertime, mm -hmm. it's, it's a spectacular destination. So thank you, everyone. Have a good night. and. Um, Hopefully you'll get yourself booked to Alaska. <laughs>